Welcome to the online prosperity show with Prosper. I'm Peter Burgess, the software architect from Olivetech Software, and we'll be talking about automation today, how you can automate your small business and how you can really give yourself a bit of a boost and get rid of all those boring manual tasks and do your best work. So I hope, hope you enjoy the episode and here's Prosper. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the software architect himself, Peter. Peter, how are you doing, man? Oh, pretty good, Prosper. Uh, very nice to talk to you again. So always good to talk. Absolutely. Now, viewers, you would understand if you really want a business that's profitable and enjoyable, you have to include some sort of automation within your business. Now, Peter here um, is a software architect and he provides software and advice that helps business leaders to better understand their business and therefore you will be making better decisions that will help your business to be profitable and enjoyable now he works strongly with automation for the many manual and tedious processes that your business has to encounter day to day. And he also creates visual dashboards, which allows your managers or yourself as a CEO to understand, um, you know, the visuals of your business and see how, um, if you're growing or you're not. Now, Peter, I could go on and on about what it is that you actually do, but it's better to hear it from the horse's mouth. Tell us a little bit about your business and how you got started there. Well, thanks, Prosper. Yes, so um, the business itself, uh, I've, I've been developing software for more than 20 years. Um, I used to do a lot of development in, in Belgium uh, for IBM, for example, and in Finland for Nokia. And, and here uh, in Australia, I've been doing de development um, consulting in, in Melbourne for different clients, you know, banking, insurance, and uh, the education sector. And a lot of the stuff I was doing, a lot of development I was doing was really back office systems, and uh, we're doing the kind of um, the systems that people don't see, the people in offices would see, but the regular man in the street wouldn't see. So I, I, I took that, that, that 20 years of knowledge into my own business. And really for a long time, like a lot of people, I, I thought I'd have a business one day. And one day was always, you know, that someday aisle that you're imagining to, to live on. Someday I'll have a business. And it was probably about seven years ago, my daughter had just been born. And there was a particular time we'd moved out to the bush and I realized that I couldn't, um, in my long-term future, I would have to start working for myself rather than commuting backwards and forwards to the city all the time. And so I actually took the plunge. And the initial few, few years or, or months of working on the business part-time uh, was quite difficult because I couldn't really figure out, you know, what I was, who I was servicing, uh, what I was going to be specializing in. So I, I eventually went back to working um, on contract in the city for a while and um, while I was sort of mulling over my ideas. It was only after about two years I got a phone call suddenly one day from a contact I'd made in those early days of the business with a very substantial project. And that was when about five years ago I flipped to going full time. Uh, it was one of those things where, you know, I, the circumstances, I always thought you need to have a certain amount of money in the bank, everything has to line up correctly before you can step out and run your own business. And suddenly this phone call happened and that was the, for me, it was a leap of faith. That was the moment when I had an opportunity to go full time and actually run a proper business. And, and that was, you know, that that's a, was a pretty important time because you can't um, line up everything in, you know, all the money, you can't line up the, um, all those circumstances in your life perfectly before you go into business. It's often, you often just need a kick in the, in the seat of the pants to get you moving. That's what happened to me. <laughs> Absolutely. So obviously, Yes, you raise a really valid point. Some people wait until everything is perfect. And, you know, had that call didn't happen, you would have waited the rest of your life. So it is, you know, a matter of um, chance that sometimes when you're, um, sometimes when, when you're prepared, you know, and chance uh, comes yeah. along your way, you know, it, it always works out perfectly. Okay. So now that you got this contract and you, you know, decided, okay, I think this is the time now, what then happened? How did you then, uh, you know, service this client without you having full, um, you know, idea of how you were going to do it? Well, the interesting thing was once I made the, this commitment to jump into, into business, I'd actually, it was a, a friend of mine, um, 
locally here who, who give me the referral. And the project itself was only a couple of months long. But initially I thought it was going to be a substantially longer. And it was during that first project that I also got talking to an ICT manager who then asked me if I'd be interested in another project. And so I then got onto another very substantial project. And then from that project, I ended up getting additional, an additional project as well. But, um, you know, my original contact who, who gave me that first phone call also put me in touch with another company. And so you, you, it started to spread out. We've got contacts, referrals from here and here and here. And suddenly I had, you know, rather than just the one contract, I had four. Absolutely. And there was substantial. And then the problem became, well, how do I actually manage all these projects? So that, that became pretty good. For the first year or two, that was pretty good. And then suddenly, of course, I was working like crazy. But I didn't do any marketing. So, and anyone who's done freelancing or run a business will know the problem that's about to arrive here. So I, I work like crazy on all these projects and suddenly I go, oh, hang on a second. Um, in a month or two's time, I've got no work. What do I do? Ah, now I've got to start marketing. And <laughs> so it was very reactive, but it's, it's where you learn. So I, I actually remember this period where suddenly all the work stopped, pretty well stopped. And then I had to scramble like crazy to get new work. And I was out there networking, going to all sorts of events to try and get projects and um and sure enough i got the projects and i got another two years work but it was and then i, I repeated the same the same process which was working like crazy but not marketing but i sort of predicted about six months before it was going to finish and i started marketing again so I, i've kind of learned from my lessons that you should actually when you run a business always continue to market as you go and not just market when you're not busy on your main stream of work it's actually something that needs to be part of your daily routine. Absolutely. So when you go into a business and then you are streamlining their, uh, their back end, what sort of things are you looking to improve within their business? So I think one of the most important things when you, when you go into a business is really trying to understand, firstly, why do they, why do they call you in the first place? Why did, what are their objectives? Uh, if they have a particular project or in mind, or they might not have had a pro project in mind, but they might have had a particular problem they're trying to solve. And they've called in you for your advice and they've asked you your opinion. Um, so for me, it's the most of my discussion will be around the problems they're facing, uh, why, did, why did they call me in the first place, um, and trying to really drill down and work out the objectives for the project. Because if you don't do that, if someone comes to you, for example, and says, um, look, I'd, I'd like you to build me a mobile app. And you say, fantastic, we'll build you a mobile app. And we build you the mobile app. It might not work, be right for you because, in fact, um, we, we don't know what the problem was you're trying to solve. You might have had an issue there that you just feel like you're, you're not getting enough sales or you're missing opportunities. And you, you see your, your competitors uh, making a lot of money through mobile apps. And you can see they've got this fantastic online store. Um, and you, you feel like you're losing business to your competitors. Well, the discussion we need to have is, is around the problem that you see, which is, you know, why is it that you're concerned about um, losing sales? Well, obviously, you, you need to make more sales to stay in business. But is this the right type of business for you? So do you need this specifically, specific type of customer? Um, do you think that an online store is going to specifically solve this problem for you? Or could there be other avenues for you to, to actually earn money? Could you, for example, the product lines you're trying to promote online, are those going to be the, you know, do you know that they're going to be successful online? And do you know, based upon your past experience, which of your product lines are the most successful and which ones aren't? So often people might punt on product lines, which if you look, do the analysis, are not actually successful at all and the company's not making decent money doing it. So we have to really drill in and, and get as much information, solve, look at the problems, look at what's caused that client to reach that particular point of calling you before we propose solutions. So it's always problem, dream, solution. You identify the problem, you spend 90% of your time talking about the problem in great detail, and then you paint the dream of how life could look better when that problem is solved. And then you talk about the solution. So in that order, not the other way around, which is solution and forget about the problem. It has to always be problem first. Absolutely. A lot of people, when they would have gone into business, Peter, you would acknowledge this, they were sold 
the dream lifestyle of, you know, uh, sit, sipping on a pina colada and looking at your novel while your business is running on autopilot. But when, as soon as you start working in your business, you realize that you can't let go of a lot of things. Now, what sort of um, jobs or what sort of activities can a business person automate? Because if they knew they could do it, most of the people would do it. Yeah, so um, I, I've kind of not reached the point of sipping pina coladas right now. I'm drinking a cup of tea, but um, <laughs> so what what can what can people automate inside a business? I, I think the most the lowest um, the least resistance thing you can automate inside a business is often your marketing. So we're, we're looking going right back to the very start, marketing the generation of leads, for example, into your business. And that is something that can be quite easily automated at a very, very low cost. And, and surprisingly, a lot of businesses don't have an automated uh, marketing setup. So they'll be sending out emails, perhaps using something like MailChimp, um, on a sporadic basis when they feel like they've got to post out a newsletter to their, their clients. But they actually have a system where you're capturing emails and then you're nurturing those clients, or sorry, those leads over a period of time. And then you're passing them through a funnel basically, you know, through your different uh, products. For example, they might be downloading a free ebook and then they might go on to um, a five-day a five day email course, a free email course. And then from there, they might then sign up to, um, you know, a 14, pay for a $49 ebook and then go on to a course. That whole system um, has to be, well, should be automated. And with a lot of tools nowadays, for example, there's a great new tool called, called Write Message, um, Write Message IO, which will probably be in the show notes after this. You can actually personalize your uh, interactions with clients um, or, or with leads online. So you can actually um, monitor how they've used your website and what content they're interested in and make sure you're nurturing them based upon that content. So if someone's really, really interested in, um, let's say you're, uh, you're selling cars and someone's specifically interested in a type of vehicle, and, and you know they're, they're more interested in in cars in a certain price bracket there's no point in trying to market to them with the high end the high end vehicles you'll be marketing to them at that bracket and a lot of and you might have noticed this with a lot of software um, a lot of systems that are not quite so sophisticated you'll be marketed the full range of products even though you're not interested in those the full range of only interested in a certain thing you might be for example um, you go to an online store you purchase uh, certain types of electric, electric electronic goods. For example, you might be interested in smartphones or you might be interested in laptops. If they're marketing to you, they'd be best off trying to market to you based upon what you've been looking at. So you've been looking at laptops and smartphones, then any, any content that comes to you should be related to, to laptops and smartphones. You're probably not interested in, in um, mixers and washing machines and such like. But you'll find that quite often everything will be thrown at you. So when you've signed up for an online store, you might have purchased something through an online store. When you receive their newsletter, it will, it will have basically photographs of all sorts of products. Um, you know, the old catalog that you get from um, the high street store with everything in it. It's not targeted at all. So this is the power of a personalization and automation. We can actually build systems which are very, very refined. And you as a marketer, uh, or you as a business wanting to market, can make sure that your customer is getting content on a regular basis, very clearly targeted to their interests. Absolutely, that that is actually really, really good because if you're out of your uh, prospect's mind, you if you're out of sight, you're out of their mind. So if you've got right. um, you know automated systems that are delivering the right kind of message at the right kind of time, you know they are more than likely to make a purchase because people buy from those they know like and trust so it just helps you to be omnipresent in what you're saying there so <clears throat> you've mentioned um uh, the tool right message is there any other tools that you might also bring um into to the mix so that people can actually streamline their their marketing there because some people don't quite know this was quite possible right from the get-go that's right so there are there are a number of really really great tools um i recommend active campaign um, there are other tools like Campaign Monitor, MailChimp. MailChimp is actually pretty good. And MailChimp is very, very easy to use and very easy, easy to set up. I would always recommend, I mean, 
either there are a number of options for, for your website. Uh, most people have a WordPress-based website. So the advantage of having a WordPress-based website or an e-commerce site using WooCommerce on WordPress is that the integrations with ActiveCampaign or MailChimp or Campaign Monitor are extremely easy. The plugins are available and they're, they're high quality. So it's really about, I mean, the process, it's about designing the flow. You have to think about the user's journey. So we have to go, you know, go right back to uh, the, their first interaction with the business. It might be they found you through, and this is an interesting exercise I always recommend customers do, which is actually looking at your, your customers or looking at, looking at your prospects, those who have actually gone on to, to purchase some of your lower end, lower end products and, and actually work back up the chain and see how did those guys actually first interact with us and which is the channel that we need to focus on. And there's a, um, actually an interesting, a fantastic expert in this area. Um, his name's Brennan Dunn. He has a website called W Freelancing, which will be in the show notes as well. And Brennan has actually got a, a, a real knack for writing long-form content. So most of the people who find him find his content through Google. So he, he, if, you, if you search uh, increase prices for freelancer, for example, or raise your prices as a freelancer, you'll find him at number one in, 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 in Google. So he's done it with long form content and excellent SEO. So I was at a conference last year, a bunch of people who, who knew Brennan, and we all asked each other, how did we first come across Brennan? And it was all through Google. So his, his funnel starts through Google, but other people might be, it might be through Facebook ads, or it might be through um, you know, articles on LinkedIn or whatever. It's a really good exercise to go back up the chain and work out where this whole flow started and then focus your marketing on that particular channel more than, more than others. But the, the automation of the flow starts really as early as possible. So we can, once we pick up that first contact, we can follow the journey the, right, the whole way through. And, um, you know, using those great tools like um, Active Campaign and then Write Message, um, you know, with a, a WordPress site using WooCommerce, if it's an online shop or whatever, um, you, you've got some pretty powerful and pretty easy integrations. And most people can do it themselves. And if not, they can be pointed in the direction. Absolutely. I mean, that's the reason why you're there, Peter. But then, you know, sometimes success um, eludes a lot of people because it, it, it just sounds like a lot of work. And um, most of these things that you've mentioned just all sound like it's too much to um, figure out. I'd just rather keep calling my, my customers and sending them emails. Sure. What a... What are people actually missing out on if you, if you would maybe just really dwell on that if they don't automate their businesses? So, I mean, I, I've just spoken about, about, about marketing, but there's lots of other aspects. And also interesting to talk, what, what does this word automation mean? So when we, we think about automation, I actually think about automation as systemization. Uh, and that's, you know, that's even less intuitive to most people than, than automation. But systemization means that you're, and there's a great book you, you might know, which is uh, by Michael Gerber called The E-Myth. The e uh, and Michael, Michael talks about how important it is to, to document your processes and to create um, repeatable templates for your business. And this is really the core of what I do, which is there's two aspects to what I do, which is the systemization and the visualization. Every business, every small business has the same problem because we have loads and loads of things to do. There's never enough money. There's never enough time. It's not, normally, it's the, the owner of the business, especially in the early days, doing everything. So you, you, you wear multiple hats. You, you're a bookkeeper, you're a marketer, you're a salesperson, you're delivering the software, you're, you're doing everything. And by systemization, we're meaning there's three different aspects. First is we're looking at all the things you do, which are basically all the tasks you do. And the, the, those tasks form processes. So for example, if I have a new customer, I've got an onboarding process. And in that onboarding process for a new customer, I've got lots of different tasks that I carry out. So one, one might be, for example, I will send them a welcome pack. And the next one is that I will add the information into my accounting system. Or I'll then add, you know, I'll, I'll add them into an additional system that I'm using for managing uh, my accounts, my, my, my customer details, like CRM, for yeah. example, you might update the CRM or the rest of it. So there's all these tasks that you carry out, not in their highly manual, so the challenge there is to, have, is to look at what you're doing and ask yourself, do you need to be doing those things? And if you do need to be doing those things, 
Can someone else do them better? Which is why we then go on to document those processes. Actually document them in detail. What's involved in each of these processes? So customer onboarding, uh, what's involved in chasing late payments, what's involved in um, processing expense claims, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And once you've documented that across your whole business, you then look at, as a business owner, which ones should I be doing? So which ones am I skilled in? Which ones I enjoy doing? And which ones should I then outsource to another person or to technology? So this is where marketing automation would come in. So you can document the way you market. You can say, we do all these things. But then you realize, ah, oh, there's so much manual stuff we do here. Could we perhaps replace this all this manual process with an automatic process through a tool like Active Campaign. Because if you think about what Active Campaign does, you know we're talking about you know, sending out uh, emails and monitoring monitoring the feedback from those emails, who's clicked it, and what engagement you've got on on that campaign uh, across the you know across multiple campaigns. If you imagine doing that without technology, just as a human actor, it'd be virtually impossible. And if you did, it would be a case of phoning up customers and saying, did you open my email? I mean, it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. no, absolutely. So that, and that's the, really the, the final piece is the automation of the systems. So you've got the initial piece, which is redesign, the second piece, which is documentation, and the third piece, which is automation. And the first two pieces, I'm actually um, currently looking for partners for both. I'm talking with one partner tomorrow about process documentation. But uh, my model is actually not to do everything myself, but to design the overall um, ex customer experience when they work with me. But I actually build, bring in experts in those different areas, and I focus on the technology. Absolutely. Now that's that's really explained it well, and I'm going to be putting all the other uh, softwares and um, information in the show notes there. Now, yeah. If somebody has been watching this video right now, they're probably, you know, you've whet their appetite as to what is possible and what else they can do within their business. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you, Peter? So the, the best way, um, obviously, is looking at the show notes down below, or they can go on to olivitech.com at the moment. We're, we're currently rebranding, so the name will change. Or find me on LinkedIn, uh, just type in uh, Peter Burgess Olivitech. Absolutely. Now, you would understand the year has just began, 2018, and uh, some people had the whole of January, um, you know, on holidays, and business is actually really starting from like the last week or so. So a few people have their New Year's resolutions, and they really want to get into 2018 with a big bang. Now, what sort of automation advice or what sort of software advice can you give to uh, people who are looking into expanding their businesses and actually do more of what they love and outsourcing um, the rest of the work to either technology or the people, like you said. So there, there are three, three things I recommend. Firstly, I always recommend, and I'll come back to this, is figure out what you're currently doing. And so actually sit back and work through all the processes that you have in your business and document what you're actually doing. And you might need help with, with this, but document what you're actually doing. And then work out what you want to be doing and the intersection, what you're really good at and what you enjoy and what customers will pay you for is the sweet spot. So you shouldn't be, for example, spending half your week doing administration tasks because you're not going to be paid by customers for that. In that case, especially with admin, you'd be looking to outsource that to a virtual assistant or somebody who can really take care of that for you. And then once you're clear about what you have in the business, so you've documented your processes, you're very clear about what you do and what you enjoy and you perhaps outsource things like your admin your bookkeeping um, answering phone calls all that kind of stuff then it's important at that point to look into something where you can get a really really good kick out of automation where you can actually save yourself a lot of time and i i think the first the first option is often marketing but it's also but for larger for businesses that might have a lot more complexity is actually going to look at your back office processes and having a look at what you're doing, for example, with managing your data. Are you using lots of spreadsheets? Are you, for example, in your accounting function, do you have, is it all manual inside the business? But I'd say for me, the biggest, one of the biggest wins I've, I've had has been moving to Xero, a cloud accounting system. If you're an online store, have a look at how you run your online store. 
are you taking those orders and then having to manually transcribe them into zero? How are you managing your payments? Is that all integrated or are you taking payments? You know, you, I've still seen in this day and age online stores where payments are taken via by a check or they're taken by, you know, you have to actually um, contact the person to make the payment. So is it all integrated? Are we into, you know, do we have eBay integrating with the online store, integrating with PayPal, integrating with Xero, so that everything's seamless? So those are things that we can do inside of a business to make it much more efficient. Um, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. Well, if you're watching this, you would seriously be considering, um, you know, some sort of automation within your business because without it, you're not going to know if you're growing or if you're actually just, um, you know, peddling and you're not really moving forward. And that's the reason why experts like Peter, who's done this for over 15 years, knows a thing or two about what needs to be done, how to actually, um, you know, document the your current processes and also give you advice on the technology that you can utilize so that you can be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable now peter i can't thank you enough for your time on the show today and um, yeah thank you so much for your depth of knowledge and also the tools that you've actually outlined to us that might actually shape um you know the way business is being done in a lot of businesses right now you're more than welcome. And I, I can, I can, I'm, I'm kind of a repository of links and, and content when it comes to tools. So I can recommend plenty more tools. I might, we might add a few in the show notes below. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. Thank you, Prosper. Great stuff.